Hi, I'm Kim Mai Cutler. I'm a partner at Initialize Capital. I'm here in Tempe, Arizona at the very first neighborhood from cul-de-sac. They're a company we invested in five years ago that's building car-free communities. Ryan, thank you so much for hosting us here. Uh, we're actually in your apartment that you just moved into at Cul-de-Sac Tempe. I'm curious, what has it been like to live here now um, in this thing that you've been dreaming about for years? How has it changed your regular day? Yeah, thanks for coming. It's great to host you. And it feels so good to live here at Cul-de-Sac Tempe. Uh, it's been a lot of work, and we think that this is a project that is going to change things in, in the U.S. And living here, it's been a few weeks now, and it feels so great. There's an actual community of residents, which is so different from just something that's a construction project. And I take the light rail into cul-de-sac's office, um, and I e-bike around and use all the different other transportation modes. I've gotten to know my neighbors, uh, multiple new friends. This is a community that I, that I want people to see, so I also have a lot of visitors. You grew up in Phoenix, your third generation here. What made you so inspired to build a car-free neighborhood? Yeah, so I grew up here in the Burbs. I had an SUV in high school and drove a lot. Uh, other than going to, uh, to a beach in Mexico, I hadn't traveled outside of the country. And then for college, I was deciding between MIT, where I would have 150,000 in debt, or the scholarship called the Flynn, where it was a full ride plus 50K on top to go to University of Arizona. And I took that. And part of the scholarship was to go abroad. And after freshman year, they took us to Budapest. And I said, wow, this is an amazing city. And it has great transportation and density and walkability. And the feel of the city is just really different and people are happier. And that opened my eyes and I went to other places. And I saw Tokyo and Amsterdam and lots of examples where building a city of sprawl is not the best way to make a city. And that launched a passion for cities. You know, a lot of really talented, ambitious people, you know, who get to have an experience like that and go abroad and see Budapest, Amsterdam, and Tokyo, they might decide, hey, I can't get this at home, so I'm going to leave. But what you did was you actually came back to your hometown and you did it here. And I'm wondering why, why Tempe and why Phoenix? It made a lot of sense regardless of me being from here. Tempe is a dynamic city. They have great job growth and it's a place that welcomes growth. And we found this parcel that was right on the light rail. And it really was just the perfect place to go after we'd searched all over the country. As you said, Tempe welcomes growth and a lot of other places. I mean, it can just really be a slog to get through a whole planning and entitlement process. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you worked with the community in the city here and what that experience was like? Tempe was a great partner. And as we were getting started, we talked to the different stakeholders and when you're doing something new, like a new type of neighborhood, there's naturally going to be a lot of questions. But we worked with folks, including fire department, sanitation department, uh, planning department, et cetera, to understand what the constraints were and to put together a plan that everyone uh, was going to love. When Initialize originally did the deal, I mean, there were a lot of companies that were trying to do ambitious, idealistic future of cities projects. I mean, I remember like Google tried to do sidewalk labs in Toronto. Y Combinator even had a post about building a new city and then they actually hired or recruited some people to come in and, and do it. But like, if you look five years later, cul-de-sac is the only company from that period that's actually built something that is real and physically here that people can actually live in and move into. Yeah, it was actually, uh, Sam Altman was leading that effort for YC. So, uh, you know, we see he's very capable of doing big things. Him not pursuing YC cities, I think is, partly because of the difficulty of it. And when we started five years ago, people said that we've lost our minds where it, we couldn't get permission to build without parking uh, and the demand wouldn't be there. And now we have something that's open that has lots of demand. It got entitlements in record speed. And now this is the reference project for how we can build walkable neighborhoods again in the United States in the 2020s. And now we're hearing from developers all over the country uh, that are using this as an example. And it's like our Tesla Roadster, where um, this is now unlocking the entire industry. And it also has led to so many inbounds for us where cities want us to, to come there. And uh, our goal is to build something that's much larger. The majority of the US wants to live this way and neighborhoods will be even better at larger scale. 
And that's what we're doing. And we have some exciting things in the works. Can you talk a little bit about how technology plays a role at cul-de-sac? I mean, there's, there's a lot of different pieces from, you know, this internal software that you've built for the resident experience. But also, I mean, I remember when, you know, we were first doing uh, the steel, there was a lot of excitement and assumption around autonomous vehicles. Let's talk about smart city tech. So every 10 years or so, there's a hype cycle for smart city tech. And it's really challenging to be able to build things. We've seen challenges with Amazon. We've seen challenges at Google. Cisco Systems left the smart city tech space. And one of the reasons is the challenge of selling to and integrating with uh, all of the parties in, the, in a city. By us building our own neighborhood, it gives us the platform uh, to make an amazing experience, right? And the goal would be to have something that's more like Disney be the role model rather than uh, existing cities of today that aren't using technology. And so uh, we build technology to make experiences seamless. And this is gonna pay big dividends later uh, as we have a larger area and we're coordinating more activities in a city. So, you know, how do you think about, you know, the lessons that you've learned from this project and then where you'll take them next? So with cul-de-sac, our goal is to bring walkable neighborhoods back. And ultimately we'd like to build the first car-free city in the US. There's demand from all over. The majority of people in the US want to live in a walkable neighborhood. We're just not building enough. As a result, the prices have become exorbitant, but it's something that we can build and we can build our neighborhoods and cities better than we've been building them in the recent past. The other interesting thing that happened during the course of you know the last couple of years, obviously, is this big shift to remote work. Like yeah. When we originally invested, you had an office in San Francisco. We did. And then the pandemic happened in and now you know we're seeing the complete reverse opposite of the situation. How are you thinking about remote work in cul-de-sac strategy, and um, how are you seeing the actual residents that are moving in, you know, using it if they are? Yeah, we started in San Francisco. We had an office there. Today we have an office in Tempe. It is twice the size for half the price and significantly nicer. Remote work has been a, a, a growing trend. Half our team is now remote. The other half is here in Tempe. And remote work works especially well for this type of neighborhood. So when, you know, when the pandemic happened and people started examining the types of buildings that were out there, people looked at our design and said, it's almost as if you built it for remote work. You know, you think about from a land or real estate development perspective, pieces of land or parcels that are close to, you know, like a, a core, a retail core, a downtown core, I mean, generally are much more expensive than yep. ones that aren't. But like today in the remote work world, I think the quote unquote startup costs of a new community or neighborhood are probably a lot less. Yeah, and what's, what's interesting though, is that earlier in the pandemic, a lot of people thought that what you'd see is a huge migration from the high cost living areas like New York, for example. And what we saw instead is New York is more popular than ever. Uh, when people had the freedom to move, the places that they wanted to move were walkable neighborhoods. Right. Remote work makes walkable neighborhoods even more desirable. When you're doing the math for where to live, the, the calculus is average person sp spends $800 a month on a car, average household spends $18,000 a year. And that creates a lot of budget for mobility services. A, a thing that's hard about getting people to move somewhere, obviously, is like, you know, people want jobs. You know, if you take that away and people can work anywhere, I think it's just, you can start a community. People want to live in a walkable neighborhood and people also want to have a great place at a good price. When someone's remote, now they're not tied to their commute. As people are doing the math on how they're gonna get around, where, you know, where they live and where they work and where they have fun are three of the big considerations. And if they don't need to have the where they work, um, there's a whole bunch of new options. We generally stopped building walkable neighborhoods in the US. And so that's why we've seen New York get even more expensive because so many people that could work remote went there. We can build more walkable neighborhoods and you could start with something that's at a lower cost and, uh, and build something. It needs to be of sufficient scale. And that's why at Cul-de-Sac, we, we, we're focusing on being able to build larger, uh, larger neighborhoods because we're our own best neighbor and everyone wants to live around a walkable neighborhood. Now that you're having residents move in, what are residents telling you about why they're choosing to live here? Being the first residents for them is exciting. They get to be here right as it starts and they see all the additional things that are gonna open uh, over the next couple of years. What they love is that this is, the, this is the perfect place where they can get around using all the different options available to them. And they have a whole community of folks who also don't have a car and that's self-reinforcing. And how did you decide on that mix of amenities? And how did you find your partners? 
We chose the mix of amenities in terms of what are the things that are most important for residents. A restaurant is really the hallmark of the community. Having a grocery store and a coffee shop are two of the first things that people ask. Gym is also popular. We don't have just a good gym, we have a great gym. And we have a co-working space because that's an important aspect of people having a full life here. And as we thought about partners, we were able to attract some of the best retailers in the city. So tell me what's next for cul-de-sac. When we announced, it was an exciting idea. And uh, there's often exciting new projects that are proposed and they spur great debate and great discussion. Uh, but we, we've actually built this and that's why it's such a game changer for this to be open. And we're getting lots of visitors, including cities that are saying, we want this in our city. And it gives us an opportunity to talk about the things that we think will make the project successful and things like protected bike lanes, uh, things like great transportation and, uh, uh, and a great attitude towards biking. And there's some exciting things that we're working on as a result of that. Ryan, thank you so much for having us here and hosting us. Thanks, it's great to have you. And also thank you. Uh, Initialized has been so supportive of cul-de-sac from the beginning. Um, you in particular uh, were someone that really understood what we were trying to do and why it's gonna change the world. And that meant a lot to us. And also you and the rest of Initialized has been so helpful in a variety of ways, making great introductions, being great thought partners, et cetera. And uh, I think it's an amazing firm that I recommend to others. Thank you so much for having us here.